So last year I decided I was gonna give this bear mode thing a shot for about eight months. Now the basic concept isn't really anything new. You basically eat in a heavy caloric surplus with the goal of gaining body weight at a pretty rapid pace. In my case, I went from about 160 pounds, pretty lean, to 183 pounds bulked. So that was 23 pounds gained on my five foot five inch frame, which was a pretty big amount of weight gain in a pretty short period of time. Now, part of this was inspired by an interview that I did with Alex from the channel Alpha Destiny, where he basically convinced me that being nice and bulky in the 15 to 20% body fat range is the single best way to look extremely muscular on a day-to-day -day basis without taking steroids. To get yoked means you got, you got super wide neck, Bold, mountainous straps, right? Boulder shoulders. Basically, it's the um, it's the mass portion, right? You look massive in a t-shirt. It's the upper back that's popping out. Right. It's um, it's that 3D mountainous effect. Now, it isn't just about getting big and bulky. Uh, bear mode also means that you're going to develop and focus on training specific muscles like the neck and the traps that, when you're in that bulked state, lead to what Alex would call a naturally enhanced. Appearance. I think the true bear mode approach is different from just dirty bulking or just getting overweight or obese and that the goal is to actually get as stacked as possible in your clothes. Uh, so maybe you lose your six pack, uh, but you still have a pretty flat stomach and in general just look like a really big, beefy buff guy pretty much. Now I took to this idea because in natural bodybuilding spheres, people tend to focus on the exact opposite where the goal is to look as big as possible on a bodybuilding stage for one or two hours while competing, not necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis. Most natural bodybuilders just accept the fact that you will often look much smaller in your clothes, and especially without a pump, uh, but because you're so lean, you tend to look very massive on stage because of the striations and the way that the light hits the muscles and creates shadows around them. But last year I thought, hey, I'm not planning to get on stage this year. I'm not competing and I've got nothing to lose. Uh, so why not eat up, gain some body fat and give this bear mode thing a shot. Um, so having done that now and having cut back down to a leaner body weight again, I think I have an official opinion on this. In my opinion, I would say the main benefit of going bear mode is that you should be stronger. All else equal, a bigger body will mean bigger lifts. And this is why people in heavier weight classes in competitive powerlifting tend to be stronger than those in lighter weight classes. And if progressive overload is the main thing driving muscle growth, then it makes sense that if you're progressively getting stronger over time, then that should lead to more muscle growth over time as well. However, this isn't exactly agreed upon by experts in the field. And before recording this video, I got Dr. Eric Helms on the line, and he actually challenged the bear mode approach, outlining some research showing that well, you don't actually gain more muscle despite being in a heavier caloric surplus. So let me challenge the, the, the concept a little bit and suggest that perhaps nutrition is permissive to weight training because you can't force feed gains. If you're not lifting weights, nutrition itself is not gonna magically make you put on muscle mass. It'll simply make you put on weight and most of it will be body fat. Training is the initiating event which induces skeletal muscle to grow. That tension stimulus is then supported by our nutrition. And this doesn't necessarily require a huge surplus. And he went on to explain to me some research from Garth and colleagues, which basically showed that when you overfed one group of elite athletes on a four day per week training program by 600 extra calories on average, they actually didn't gain significantly more muscle than the other group but they did gain over three times the fat mass. So just about all the extra weight from bulking was added as fat, not as muscle. Um, but I think it's worth noting that this was just one eight to 12 week study. Uh, so perhaps more meaningful differences would have came up and would have been detected over a longer time frame, uh, but maybe not. I think that the bottom line here is that although you might gain more muscle when going bear mode, uh, you will undoubtedly gain more fat mass uh, which means that the next time you have to diet down, uh, chances are you're going to either need to diet for longer or diet more aggressively to get that excess body fat off again. And according to all the case studies that we have on natural bodybuilding, cutting phases that are more aggressive tend to result in more muscle loss. So even if you built more muscle while bulking up, you may also lose more muscle when cutting back down. Now for the true bear mode adherent, this may not even be a real problem because the goal with the bear mode approach is not to look as aesthetic and lean as possible or to even maintain a lean physique over time. Uh, but the goal is to be as big and strong as you possibly can be, even if that means adding some extra body fat. 
despite the fact that you most likely won't gain as much muscle as you'd like to by eating in a large caloric surplus, I still think that if you want to get as big and strong as you possibly can while looking beefier and bigger in clothes, uh, then I think the bear mode approach makes perfect sense. All right, so pro number two when going bear mode is that you really never have to worry about cravings, hunger, or changes in mood, uh, which you so often have to deal with when trying to stay lean. And I would say this was probably the most pronounced benefit for me. It was pretty sweet being able to wake up or <laughs> be up at one in the morning and have a slice of cheesecake and it actually be a part of the plan where you're eating to fuel your strength and performance in the gym and actually try to gain weight while simply accepting the body fat that comes as a part of the process. And I actually think that this can be pretty psychologically stabilizing for many men to sort of help break the spell of trying to look lean all the time and instead focus on your performance in the gym because I think too much of a focus on aesthetics can very often lead to a skewed body image where in your head you may think you're actually much fatter than you in fact are. Uh, so in my experience, bear mode was actually a pretty good antidote to this because the goal was shuttled away from aesthetics and leanness and onto strength and size. Um, so that was great. And pro number three for me was that I do feel like I actually did look bigger in my clothes uh, just out walking around without a pump especially in a hoodie or a t-shirt. You tend to fill out your shirts more. Um, however, the flip side of this uh, brings me to the first negative, which is that with a shirt off, I think I did actually look a bit smaller. Um, this was especially true when posing or flexing in good lighting. Um, so if you want to look good at the beach or at a photo shoot or even in a tank top, I think most people will look bigger when leaner, even if their body weight is in fact lower. And there are so many crazy examples of this. Uh, if you look at natural bodybuilders in their off season uh, compared to when their contest shredded, uh, when posing in good lighting, they actually look way bigger even if they are in fact lighter. And con number two for me was that I did tend to feel more sluggish in my training. I'd get more easily winded, especially during high volume leg days. And I think that even though I was stronger, my work capacity was probably a bit worse, which is definitely bad from a pure hypertrophy perspective, since we know that there's a dose response relationship between training volume and muscle hypertrophy. Now, a fairly simple countermeasure to this would have been for me to simply add in aerobic conditioning work. Um, so I suspect that if I had done, say, high intensity cardio while going bear mode, I probably would have been able to handle that high volume leg training a little bit better. Uh, but still, I think that cardio is really time consuming. And if you do it too frequently, it can actually interfere with your ability to build muscle. Um, so I do see this as a bit of a catch 22 for going bear mode. Um, so all in all, I would say that there definitely are some pros there definitely are some cons to going bear mode. Uh, for me personally, I probably will do the bear mode approach again, uh, but this time I'll probably be much more methodical with my own training and really make sure that my strength is scaling appropriately uh, as I gain weight. And I think I'll definitely add in a bit of extra cardio, probably two to three days a week. So handling higher volumes on leg days isn't too much of a challenge. And for you, you want to also keep in mind the research that Dr. Helms showed that you don't need to be in a heavy caloric surplus to build muscle. And you also want to remember that nutrition is permissive to training, meaning you can't force a muscle to grow just by overfeeding it. Um, so depending on whether your goal is to look lean while building muscle or to look as big and beefy as you possibly can, especially in clothes, then you'll have to make an educated choice about whether the bear mode approach or the lean bulk approach makes the most sense to you. Um, so I'm going to put some general recommendations up here on the screen. Uh, if you did want to pause it and read uh, what I would suggest for doing a bear mode approach versus a lean bulk um, and how I'd set everything up for that. And before we go, I have to give a huge thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. As many of you guys know, I've made it a goal of mine to read 50 books this year. And I think that the easiest way to do that is by taking advantage of audiobooks uh, so that you can listen while on the go, which makes reading so convenient. Um, I'm currently finishing up The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe by Steve Novella. And it's seriously amazing. I think if you have any interest in science, logic, reasoning, and skepticism in general, then you've got to read it. I've been using Audible for the last four or five years, and I think it's a great service. Um, so if you'd like to get started with your free audiobook and a 30-day trial, you can go to audible.com forward slash Jeff Nippard, or you can text Jeff Nippard to 500-500, and I'll have that as the first link in the description box below. Um, so thank you to Audible uh, for showing your support on the channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.